So far, we have looked at three iterative algorithms for solving the sorting problem. We have seen insertion sort, we have seen selection sort, and we've also seen bubble sort. All these three algorithms are iterative algorithms. An iterative algorithm is one that runs as a sequence of iterations. So the execution of the algorithm can be visualized as a sequence of iterations. And each iteration takes us closer and closer to the final goal, which is the required output. So we start from the initial array, the input array that is given to us. And each iteration transforms the array bit by bit so that there is overall progress towards ultimately reaching the final goal, which is the sorted output. For example, focusing specifically on insertion sort, before the algorithm begins, we know that we can trivially treat the very first element of insertion sort of the array, sorry, as being sorted. And that's A of 1. Then when the first iteration of insertion sort runs, it takes the second element and inserts it into the right place in the sorted portion, which is just one element long, thereby extending the sorted portion by one element. And so after one iteration, two of the, the first two elements of the array are in sorted order. Then when we run another iteration of insertion sort, the first three elements are in sorted order. Likewise, after approximately i iterations, the first i elements of the array are in sorted order. So I've shown the sorted portion of the array in blue here, and the unsorted portion is in red. So the unsorted portion goes on decreasing in length by one after every iteration until finally the entire array is sorted. The length of the sorted portion goes on increasing by one after every iteration. So there is some measure of progress here. The algorithm is making progress after every iteration starting from the initial array and progressively inserting successive elements into the sorted portion, extending the sorted portion by one, by one element, until finally all the elements are inserted into the sorted portion, making the entire array sorted. This is another way to look at the same um, diagram as in the previous page. You can think of a horizontal timeline over here for the execution of insertion sort. And at the very beginning, when we start the algorithm, the sorted portion has a, a trivial length of one unit. The first element of the array can be thought of as the sorted portion. And when one loop of insertion sort runs, at the end of the first iteration or the, the execution of the while loop, which takes the next element and keeps shifting the elements that it's seeing to the left, it's, you know, we, we start scanning from uh, the next element to the left, right? If you want to insert the jth element, A of J, we start from A of J minus one and we scan to the left and we go on shifting the elements to the right until we find the right location to insert A of J in. And that is when that particular iteration ends. So after one iteration, the second element is inserted into the right place. So A of one to two is sorted. After another iteration, at the end of another iteration, three elements of the array are sorted and so on. 
So this execution of insertion sort can be seen as a sequence of these iterations. And each iteration consists of a loop, which is going to insert an additional element into the sorted portion. Now, at the end of every iteration, or at the end of the execution of every loop, which makes up an individual iteration of the sorting algorithm, we can make this assertion about the state of the data structure at this point. If the data structure in this context is the array, and we can say something about the elements of the array at the end of each iteration. In particular, we can claim that at the end of the ith iteration, the first i elements of the array are sorted. Now, if, if we can define such an assertion for our sorting algorithm, then it allows us to track progress. It allows us to uh, track the progress of the execution of the algorithm towards this final goal where we want all the elements to be sorted. This kind of an assertion also helps us prove that the algorithm is correct. It may have seemed very intuitive to you that the three algorithms we have looked at are correct and terminate in a finite amount of time. But in many contexts, you may need to justify that your algorithm is correct by coming up with a formal proof of correctness. And if we can come up with this formal assertion about the state of the array at the end of each iteration. And if we can prove that if that the assertion holds at the end of every iteration, it can go a long way in helping us prove that the algorithm is correct. Because if this iteration holds for all i, then it also holds at the end of the nth iteration, which means at the end of the nth iteration, a of 1 to n is going to be sorted. And that is basically what we want. That's our goal. So we want to prove that for all i, a of 1 to i is sorted at the end of iteration i. Okay, I may be off by one here because, you know, um, before we begin any iteration, we are treating that the first element a of 1 is in a sorted portion of its own and it's already sorted but you know you can you can come up with a precise index i'm just giving you a rough idea here of what exactly this assertion needs to be like and the way we're going to prove this assertion is by mathematical induction okay so at the beginning, we have our base case, which is a trivial base case, simply saying that a single element, A of 1, by itself, is sorted. So the base case is true, trivially. And in the induction step, we need to prove that assuming that A of 1 to I is, is sorted at the beginning of an iteration, At the end of that iteration, a of 1 to i plus 1 is going to be sorted. So in the induction step, I'm assuming here that you're familiar with mathematical induction. So our induction hypothesis is going to be, the induction hypothesis is going to be that at the end of the uh, kth iteration, a of 1 to k is sorted. And in our induction step, we need to prove that after the k plus first iteration, a of 1 to k plus 1 is going to be sorted. 
and if we can prove that then we have proved by induction that for all i a of 1 to i is going to be sorted at the end of iteration i and that's going to help us conclude that at the end of the nth iteration the entire array is going to be sorted so proving this induction step is relatively simple if you are familiar with the algorithm itself i won't go into that here because we have discussed the algorithm in a great amount of detail in previous videos but you can use that explanation given in those videos to argue that assuming that a of 1 to k is sorted at the beginning of an iteration the algorithm for insertion sort will take the k plus first element and it will insert the k plus first element into the right location within the sorted portion thus extending the sorted portion by one element or in other words ending up with a sorted portion that is k plus 1 elements long k of 1 to k plus 1 which is also going to be sorted so you can easily argue this out by using the pseudo code for the algorithm that we saw so this is a way in which you can formally prove an iterative algorithm to be correct you need to come up with an assertion about the state of the data structure at every point after the end of every iteration in the execution of the algorithm and you need to formally prove that this that assertion is always going to hold on the code or the pseudo code that you have for the algorithm and to prove that we need to use induction we need to prove the base case and then assuming the induction hypothesis holds we need to prove the induction step where you use the induction hypothesis to argue that if at the beginning of an iteration the assertion holds then it's going to hold at the end of the iteration as well and this iteration sorry this assertion is technically called as a loop invariant because it's specifying a condition that must invariably hold throughout the algorithm throughout the execution of the algorithm and if it doesn't hold somewhere that means there's something wrong with your algorithm and so of, of course you need to come up with the right loop invariant in your proof but assuming that you do come up with the right loop invariant you can use your code to prove that the loop invariant actually applies throughout the algorithm and by doing that you can prove that your algorithm is correct So this is a formal way to prove the correctness of an algorithm, of an iterative algorithm. Although intuitively you might have felt that the algorithm was correct, even when we looked at the code earlier. So we looked at these three examples of sorting algorithms. For insertion sort, the loop invariant is going to be that at the end of the i th iteration a of 1 to i is going to be sorted of course um, this could be plus or minus 1 i mean I, i don't want to be very precise about the um, exact boundary of the index here but you can you know uh, you can say it's going to be either i plus 1 or i minus 1 over here likewise for selection sort you can come up with a loop invariant or an assertion which applies at the end of every iteration which is that after iteration i again the first i elements are going to be sorted but we can also say something more specific than we could in insertion sort which is that the i elements that are in locations a of 1 to i are the i smallest elements in the entire input array right? so the first element a of 1 is the overall smallest element in a and it's already in its final location the second overall smallest element in the input array is going to be in its final location which is a of 2 and so on so all these i elements are not only sorted but they are in their final location also 
that's not true in insertion sort because it's possible that you may encounter an element later which will end up being inserted at the beginning of the sorted portion thus shifting all the elements in the sorted portion to the right so we can't say that the elements that are in the sorted portion at any point are in their final locations because those the elements can actually be shifted around for bubble sort 2 we can come up with a loop invariant or an assertion which is actually going to be uh, identical to that in selection sort at the end of the i iteration the first i element the, uh, the first i elements of a are going to be in sorted order and moreover they are going to be in their final locations because in every iteration of bubble sort we are taking the next smallest element in the overall array and bubbling it up to the appropriate location so this is how we can uh, formalize our intuition in order to prove that these algorithms these iterative algorithms that we've seen are correct we come up with a loop invariant for an assertion and we prove using our pseudo code that this loop invariant applies throughout the execution of the algorithm